morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening uh, from uh, the panel. It's time to pivot. Uh, we are discussing. Uh, you just bounced out. Wow. <laughs> where, did, where did our panelists go? <laughs> where are you? Silent night. Oh, he's back. Yeah, actually, I don't know. I've been thrown out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, we are discussing a very relevant topic today. Uh, and uh, this is a Horasis USA meeting. Uh, let <clears> us <throat> thank uh, Frank Jergen Rister, the founder of uh, Horasis uh, platform, uh, a community of uh, professional uh, thinking on different uh, topics. And uh, right now, we are discussing a topic uh, on uh, COVID. Uh, the, its impact and uh, things like that. So while there is no way to tell exactly what the economic damage uh, from the global COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic will be, there is a widespread agreement uh, among economists uh, that it will have a severe negative impacts on the global economy. Global stock markets have also suffered dramatic falls due to the coronavirus outbreak. The economic damage caused uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is largely driven by fall in demand. Heavily affected industries are hospitality, travel, and tourism. The specific nature of this crisis means that uh, some sectors benefited from it. E-commerce, food, retail, IT, and healthcare industries uh, provided at least some economic growth to offset the damage. Governments have learned uh, from this crisis uh, that the effects of uh, demand-driven recession can be countered with government spending. Higher prices of products and services are reflected in rising inflation rates. Majority of the global population is vaccinated against COVID-19, and that is a, a, a good amount of respite. We certainly have a challenge to come back to normal or say new normal. This will involve hybrid working, COVID protocols to continue, et cetera, et cetera. We are here to discuss precisely some of these aspects to cover impact of entrepreneurship, strategies, uh, strategizing businesses, new opportunities, and the global perspective. And for doing that, I certainly have with me uh, distinguished uh, uh, panel members uh, who would be really taking this uh, topic further and presenting uh, their own perspective. I would uh, begin, uh, uh, maybe I could just uh, take uh, the names of the panelists and they would uh, take the responsibility of introducing themselves. I have with me Mark Pattinson uh, from USA. I have uh, Mr. Bill N, uh, from uh, Vietnam. I have MSR from India, Hyderabad, and wow. Mr. Pina Hirano from Japan, Tokyo. And I also would be having to join with me is Bruce Murhead uh, from Australia. So uh, let me begin with Mark, uh, who's uh, the American uh, here in the group, <laughs> to take a perspective on the U.S. Uh, economies and uh, his uh, presentation. Thank you, uh, Mark, uh, for beginning. Yeah, well, thank you to everybody. I'm very honored to be in this very um, uh, prominent group of speakers around the world. Uh, and so from the United States, here I am in Arizona uh, speaking with you. And so uh, I'm a former NFL player. Um, I am an executive for Sports Illustrated. I'm a philanthropist, uh, and I just recently uh, finished climbing the seven summits with my ascent up Mount Everest. So, um, so it was really interesting the last couple of years how we've really shifted our business. So I'll really I'll first start with business, then my pursuit of the seven summits, speaking and uh, in terms of a public speaker and uh, my philanthropy that I've been doing. So. With business, five years ago, I helped start a technology company, and two years ago, we took over Sports Illustrated. Uh, Sports Illustrated is a very iconic global brand uh, that competes up there with with uh, uh, with ESPN and and others. And when the pandemic hit, it like a lot of people around the globe, we had major offices in New York, in Los Angeles, and, and in Seattle. 
And so we shuttered ultimately all of our different offices and we went 100 percent remote. And something really interesting happened uh, within that. Number one is that we started to really climb um, the, the ladder in terms of viewability. Um, when we started the company, uh, we, we were nothing. We didn't have any software. And then we slowly, with our strategy, started taking over different companies. And then with Sports Illustrated, we took them from number 12. Uh, there's roughly 22 uh, million eyeballs on that company um, per month. And we've taken them this last month to number four, just behind CBS at 92 million. And one of the reasons for that, the impact, is that we really learned along the way that long-term journalism doesn't work anymore. And so our ability to have multiple publishers putting out frequency of content with short 250 to 500 words with videos has been the magic trick to get people in this day and age with cell phones where they're being uh, distracted with so many different messages. It was really an opportunity for us to understand that. And, and people now are coming back and I think will be number one um, by the end. But it's just really interesting because no longer are we doing the social gathering of coming into an office. Our structure has been completely pushed apart. And again, we're all working for uh, remotely, but in our case, we've had tremendous amount of growth. So that's on the business side. Um, for my pursuit of the seven summits, I was supposed to go climb Mount Everest in 2020. And of course, as we all know, um, that the, the Everest season starts in around April 1st and runs through the end of May. And in March, which I was preparing to leave for Mount Everest, I've been training like an animal for a year. The whole world shut down. Couldn't get into Nepal. That's coming from the south side. You couldn't get in from China. That's going through Tibet, through the north side. And so nobody was traveling. Everybody shut down. And so what I had to do is like redefine the way I was thinking about my training. All the gyms shut down, right? Nobody was going to any gym that were out there. So what was I going to do? I ended up building my own home uh, studio, my gym, and I redefined the way that I was training. I moved to the small mountain town called Sun Valley. Right out my window, I've got a big mountain. So I was able to go and use the outdoors to my advantage to train, train, train. So the 2020 season went by, nothing happened. And then we rolled into 2021. As we're going into 2021, of course, as we flew over to Nepal, the world was breaking apart again. We were just coming around just on the, on the verge of being vaccines. Some people were getting them. Many people didn't. And so we had this big outbreak up on the mountain of Mount Everest. You know, so how did we adjust up there? What we did is rather than have a bunch of groups and all the Sherpas and all the different teams mix in with each other, we kept separate. We stayed in our own little pods. And so that allowed at least our group that nobody in our, in our uh, expedition party to get COVID. And as a result, we got very lucky. Out of the 400 people that were on the mountain, only 120 of us made it. Um, and of our group, uh, we started with over, over 24 climbers. And those 24 climbers, only 10 of us made it. And those more had to do with lung issues and the ability just not to make it versus they got COVID and had to get flown off the mountain. So this year, here we go again. Um, these guys are back at it. There's, you know, it's Omicron. And it'll be interesting to see how many people up there when you're at 17,500 feet and you're exposed and your body doesn't react well to sickness, obviously because of thin air, and there's a lack of oxygen. It'll be interesting to see how many people get flown off. Because of the different things I've been doing in the last couple of years, we move into speaking, public speaking. Um, obviously, nobody could convene. Nobody could come together. And so um, as a result, all the public speaking stuff shut down. And the reason why that's important to me is because what I do is I, I uh, push out a percentage of my proceeds to the philanthropy group called Higher Ground that's based out of Sun Valley. It's also in New York and L.A. And I wasn't able to push any of those funds through. So it was a major bummer that I wasn't able to go and share my story and talk about how I was trying to pay it forward. But a beautiful story about all this is that the NFL decided to do a film, which I've now sent to you guys in this, this chat. And this, it's a 30-minute documentary um, on my Everest journey. And what we're able to do is once the NFL film came out, we were able to put it in some different theaters and 100% of all those proceeds went to this charity, so philanthropy. So in just a very indirect way, because of what happened, the NFL wouldn't have come calling to me in 2020, but because of, of there was this delay because of COVID, that the, the, the chain reaction, they came calling last January, January of 2021, they wanted to do the film. We made it happen. And as a, as a result of that, we did, we've been able to help a number of different people with their various issues through the, the nonprofit Higher Ground. So 
I want to make this brief. I don't want to go too much longer. I think my time is up, but that's some of the different ways and things that I'm involved in that we've had to adjust. And then as a result, you know, uh, make uh, lemonade of lemons that hit us with COVID and we're, we're really thriving and moving forward. Thank you, Mark. Uh, you know, it's very, very pleasing that uh, your uh, task was absolutely a physical one, training yourself and then um, uh, going up in the mountain, etc. And COVID precisely did that, that it made uh, the physical uh, aspects very weak and then the people suffered a lot. Yeah. And then we, it is also very, very heartening that uh, you devised your uh, means and methods uh, to train yourself and to keep up uh, to the speed. And uh, I think COVID uh, taught us all this as to how to survive uh, or rather create a survival mode for every profession uh, that one is in. So it's nice to hear your story. Certainly, uh, your film is going to be much more educative to people who would like to engage further. I will take uh, this opportunity to go to the other side uh, of the hemisphere uh, with uh, Pina, uh, who is into the IT world. Uh, how, how about you, Pina? How uh, would you uh, throw in your perspective? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, for the COVID-19, um, <clears throat> um, talking about COVID-19, before uh, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. Uh, as I introduce, uh, I'm running a uh, software development company uh, in Japan, US, UK, in Singapore, and uh, in China. So the, based on that uh, business, the overall, uh, our business, our business itself is uh, actually improved uh, based on COVID. While uh, the our countries are damaged, so uh, I introduce uh, the how Japan Japanese economics is damaged by COVID nineteen in the first. The in fiscal year twenty twenty, that means uh, April to March, the fiscal year uh, GDP was down minus. Uh, 4.6%, that is minus. It was larger dec decline than Lehman Shock one. So the economic, total economic is uh, really damaged. And uh, also the, according to the Teikoku Data Bank, which is the largest research uh, company, and uh, uh, in Japan, 58.3% uh, of company decreased uh, revenue and COVID-19, so by COVID-19. And the most damaged uh, industry is hotels. And that's the decrease, uh, decline rate is over uh, 25%. And on the other hand, most improved uh, industry is uh, information services like us. So uh, we cannot say um, so much. We have a very good win. But the, in fact, uh, we are in the one, one of the company, uh, we had uh, the tailwind in our economy. For instance, uh, the our Asteria <clears throat> uh, was a really uh, increased revenue and also the record high uh, profit because of COVID. And, uh, but it is not only by COVID, but the, as the theme of this uh, session, we actually pivoted so rapidly about our information service business. So um, we changed it, uh, the activity to 100% remote uh, in back in uh, March of 2020. And also the, we changed uh, the marketing activity 90% online um, uh, at the COVID-19. So uh, even in the information industry, some of the uh, companies are damaged because they couldn't change their uh, way of doing, way of business, like uh, a real event or the real visit of the sales kind of stuff. But uh, we are luckily, uh, we change it and uh, we, we are keeping that uh, change for two years and we are uh, enjoying a very good revenue and profit. Um, that that's our company. Uh, the now what's going on in Japan is a <clears throat> now we uh, experienced the sixth wave of the infection 
And uh, many people or many companies want to return back to before. But the, what I predict is the winner of the economics uh, will be the changer rather than returner. So uh, we uh, are helping uh, the, those companies who want to change uh, to new normal, not the past normal, uh, by providing a new software or new services uh, on cloud or the using uh, IoT or AI. So that's my introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pina. Uh, certainly new normal has uh, been instituted by most of the people where uh, working methods have changed. Uh, we have resorted to hybrid uh, from work from home uh, last two years, uh, uh, including myself, uh, meaning I've been sitting in this particular place for the last two, two and a half years, looking at the laptop as much I have not looked at it in the last 40 years. But then uh, that has been the means uh, of communicating and then creating a world community, which I have uh, been able to make it a much larger community in the last two years, which physically was just not possible. So IT industry certainly helped us out uh, in this uh, pandemic in creating an e-commerce platform or creating uh, the work from home concepts uh, and now the hybrid concepts where people are required to be uh, present at the workstation as per the need, etc. I will uh, uh, move further to take some more perspective from Australia. Bruce. Mm -hmm. Muted. You're mute. Hi, everybody. Um I'm feeling pretty um, uh, uh, lazy after Mark's introduction of um, his personal life. So um, uh, it's, that's probably been one of the most inspiring insights of many of the com online conferences. And it's nice to hear ourselves talking personally about ourselves. Oftentimes on panels, um, it's always about um, our latest insights regarding our work. But And it's a good example possibly of the post-COVID where we are much more personal um, than we probably were before. Um, executives in track suits and instead of suits and, and uh, it's probably democratised influence a lot more rather than just those who could get into the rooms to influence. But a little bit about me, I, I'm interested in, um, uh, in um, reimagining intelligence. And so I've spent most of my life doing working in problem solving um, on the ground in Europe and London. Australians tend to travel a lot. So we, we've we had an opportunity to work around most countries and or travel most countries in the world. And it's always been a fascination to me as to how to solve the unsolvable problem. And there's probably nothing worse than a problem that remains unsolved. Um, I, my premise is that the smartest person um, in the room is the room. So we've built most of our companies on basis of uh, what we call collect collective intelligence. And so when we raised money recently, four years ago, very few people knew or were interested in collective intelligence. Um, it was uh, the investment memorandum required a bottle of red wine to be sent with it so people could read through it and, and, um, and, and understand it. It was the pain. Of, there was actually no really clear pain point for society. Um, that we would require collective intelligence because we we weren't we were thinking about tele intelligence probably in a linear analog way that we keep solving the price the pro you know we keep solving problems the way we did a hundred years ago it's and and that yet we're also connected um, so we had a product that was probably in front of the pain point in front of the need and so COVID was brilliant for us because we developed what we um, call it an insight surface or an insight finder, an efficient way to uh, find insights in conferences, in meetings, in, in companies. And we started to see the power of XPRIZE, Kaggle and other platform companies that were enabling large groups of people to solve problems. And in every one of them was the unusual suspect who tended to solve problems. So COVID has, give, has made famous those that aren't that famous, those that aren't defined as experts. Um, if you look at the oil spill in Florida, a tattoo artist in Florida was one of the major influences in the solution under the Obama uh, administration. Two finance hedge funders, one General Electric's desire to build a predictive health algorithm. 
So all of a sudden, I think COVID, I just, I'll just i posit it for our discussion, has almost redefined expertise and it's also um, uh, fragmented expertise. Just as we're saying, we're in our rooms, we're, we're, we're fragmented and we have much more capacity to participate in problem solving in this new world. And so I believe COVID's changed everything in the way we should be thinking about intelligence, insights, and, um, and problem solving. So my personal interest is in that space. I used to play a lot of tennis when I was younger, competitive tennis, Mark, so you're making me think I've got to get my racket back. <laughs> um, but, but, I, but on the professional side, I've just always been uh, uh, fascinated by the way humans solve problems and how we can make it more efficient and how we could potentially achieve solving the unsolvable problems by, in our most recent work, connecting human and artificial intelligence. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Bruce. Uh, uh, in our uh, uh, college days or the institute days when I was learning management, our teacher used to always say that for every problem, there is at least one solution. It is yes. your wisdom which decides how fast you reach that solution. So for all those uh, people who would like to be optimistic, I would like to take that statement, uh, which I made it uh, uh, as a part of my life, that I never feared any particular problem because mm -hmm. I always knew that there is a solution, at least one solution, if not many. So yeah. uh, I think what you are working in a space of problem solving is something which is required in this time uh, uh, as far as the entire world community is concerned because <clears throat> people have problems and then they are stuck. And which is where I think you're contributing. It's immense. And uh, I think uh, it's very commendable. Thank you, uh, Bruce, for your insight. Uh, I would uh, go to MSR from Hyderabad uh, for his perspective. Sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Shalendra. And uh, it's been fascinating uh, listening to our, you know, to our wonderful set of uh, uh, panelists so far. Uh, I think... Uh, listening to Mark's uh, journey about Everest and uh, listening to you know, Bruce. I think uh, I've, I've learned more in the last 10, 15 minutes uh, than I've, you know, for a while, right? So first of all, thank you for that. Okay, so I'll start with a, you know, quick, you know, there's one of my favorite quotes. Uh, this is a quote from Einstein, which I kind of think about pretty much every day. So I'm going to read this for you. Uh, it says, uh, out of clutter, find simplicity from discord mm. find harmony and in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity right so we all know that you know covid particularly in the indian context and i think uh, uh, pina referred to you know gdp deceleration you know in japan so india uh, we were down about 7% last year but uh, we are poised now this year uh, the estimate is that we'll get to somewhere between 8.7 to 9.2, right? So I think, uh, you know, just reflecting on, you know, the Einstein quote, difficulty lies opportunity, right? So I think uh, a lot of our businesses have reimagined themselves. So the drive to, you know, uh, drive to digitize, the drive to figure out how to, you know, sometimes in good times, a lot of organizations tend to become complacent and flabby and all of that, right? So people have had to reimagine. Uh, supply chains have been disrupted. So the opportunity, for example, India, as you know, is uh, you know the largest population of the people on this call, right? In terms of uh, you know, in terms of 1.3 billion people, uh, we've had some outstanding innovations in the healthcare space. We've had people figure out how to do you know telemedicine and all of that, right? And just to give you a perspective, uh, last year. Uh, we had, you know, the space I am in is all about entrepreneurship and innovation, supporting entrepreneurs. And uh, we've had uh, 42 unicorns coming out of India in the last year, right? So in the last 13 years, we had about 39. So just last year, we had about 42 unicorns coming out. So which essentially tells you a couple of things. One is, of course, the market is awash with liquidity, but people are also finding if the time and opportunity to build great, uh, lasting, sustainable uh, companies, right? So essentially, from uh, that standpoint, uh, how have, so so essentially, what I do at this point, you know, I've done a bunch. Of, I've had uh, my uh, my working life has been in you know three parts. 
uh, one as a professional, then um, as an entrepreneur twice over, uh, built and had uh, successful exits, uh, you know, twice over. And now I'm focused on helping other entrepreneurs, supporting them in their journeys, you know, helping them, uh, you know, one is from an incubation standpoint, second is scaling and acceleration. And uh, I think what this whole COVID has done is to kind of you know help us reimagine the future of work how can we get more productive how can we learn to be more collaborative right and how can we you know truly build uh, i think you know, clearly for example uh, many of the companies we support are essentially software as a service companies uh, you know so and what this has told us is uh, you know the cliche about uh, geography being history is actually starting to come true so it's been a great time. Of course, the human impact uh, has been, you know, uh, has been, uh, has been, to say the least, horrible. But I think, uh, you know, a lot of uh, new ways of working, a lot of new businesses, uh, you know, the increased use of uh, uh, technology, in particularly in, in medicine and healthcare, uh, I think uh, we'll probably get out of this better than we were uh, before. Thank you, uh, MSR. Uh, I think uh, in India, uh, we certainly have uh, struggled uh, uh, initially, but then uh, the programs of vaccination, uh, we were at the forefront. And uh, having uh, such a big uh, population vaccinated and uh, creating a work environment, uh, uh, working from home, uh, changes in lifestyle, uh, the way we are in the rural uh, part of India, uh, it was a challenge uh, for the government as well as people as such. And this is where I think uh, today the entire world community has come out and uh, found ways and means of uh, living. Like uh, you said it, uh, the quotes uh, which you have said it, I really did uh, some uh, seven or eight uh, webinars on challenges uh, when we are talking about COVID. There are going to be several opportunities also uh, which have come out of uh, COVID. So. Uh, challenges, uh, wherever there is a challenge, there is uh, an opportunity. And a saying uh, that a door closes, uh, 10 doors open. So it is left to us, uh, uh, left to our optimism to find those 10 doors opening rather than uh, cribbing about a door which has been closed. And uh, this is where I think uh, uh, most of us have really spent our time in finding out uh, that the, which are those opportunities which have given us uh, some benefit and then we have been able to survive. Although the production loss, although in the industry or the manpower, uh, which were not working fully to the capacity, people have achieved efficiencies of uh, in excess of 60%, which was quite good. So the economies have kept running, although not to the total satisfaction as such. But then, yes, uh, as I have been saying, that information technology helped us a lot. Learning took place uh, because of the information technology. Uh, businesses took places uh, because of the information technology. And to talk more about uh, this on the information technology, I think I have Bill uh, from Vietnam who has been working extensively in uh, learning uh, uh, through uh, electronics media. Bill. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Bill Nguyen. Uh, the CEO of ABS Digital. Uh, we offer e-learning and online courses. And uh, as COVID-19 happened, uh, as been as I, the most few get damaged from COVID in Japan, in hotel. In my country, the most business uh, get damaged from COVID-19 is tourism. Nearly two, th- 2 million people get laid off, no jobs for nearly two years because until now our country is still lost to on airline international airline no not not open yet they will open in um, 15 march this month but uh, as far as i know just 10 percent of the uh, vietnam airline airline flight to international international so the people in tourism still get unemployment. And if, if travel to Vietnam, many coffee shops and restaurants still lost because no customer and 
COVID, Omicron person still spread over the country, especially in the north. And um, as early in 2020, we see COVID-19 happen and we talk of uh, offering online courses uh, in Vietnamese and English as people cannot go to school. So we build courses and we believe people like to take online courses to get promoted in their job, uh, another way to find another ability to develop their career. And our vision is we commit to serve and build society that people can take any classes and expand, expand, expand their career and get promoted. And uh, to get customer, we we run on marketing online, uh, marketing online, and our office people work from home, and they assign the job for people. People they work from home, and honestly, people are like to work from home, and they do the job better than in in the office. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bill, uh, for your perspective. Certainly, Vietnam is a country which, uh, uh, as I have been saying it, I would like to visit. And uh, last two, two and a half years, uh, we have been postponing it. So uh, in my initial remarks itself, I had said the, the worst of uh, the industries uh, which have suffered uh, is the travel and tourism. And most of the people had to close their shops because they could not uh, get uh, customers or for that matter, hoteling or uh, the industries like that and uh, the it is very very uh, nice feeling that we have started traveling again with a lot of restriction but nevertheless it is not the same meaning we always have some kind of a uh, feeling uh, of that insecurity uh, really attached to while we are traveling uh, we we still not traveling the way we used to travel earlier now, you had uh, mentioned uh, something about the online uh, training and online courses. You know, there have been uh, two-year programs. Uh, for example, in India, we have a postgraduate program for doing management of two years. There have been people who have taken admissions online and they have graduated online. They haven't visited their institute. They don't know what is their alma mater looks like physically. And <laughs> they have secured jobs also. You know, it is uh, something they are missing uh, Yes, they have got the knowledge, but then the physical interaction, meeting the faculty members, visiting the institute, doing the uh, participative group discussions and things like that, those were all missing. Like people have been saying, it's together, what is the difference between the discussions which we have been having in these webinars and what is the physical this thing? I always say that, uh, yes, we are talking to a screen, we are talking to people, but then uh, those emotions or those uh, physical uh, notations uh, which we have it uh, during a physical meeting are missing in this. And that really sometimes uh, really carry a lot of meaning, especially in the meetings where we conduct sales. You know, the body language is very, very important uh, rather than uh, a simple uh, communication or expression. So there are certain areas where people have suffered a lot. Now, uh, having uh, taken the global perspective on COVID, its uh, impact and things like that, I just uh, wanted to open uh, this discussion uh, for a few questions, uh, which are uh, really uh, very, very important. Uh, if uh, we could correlate uh, what exactly happened to our businesses uh, uh, when we are talking about this particular pandemic uh, related to uh, US businesses, if we can corroborate uh, between uh, U.S. and uh, the respective countries. If somebody would like to take on, uh, throw some light on that perspective, it would be very well uh, welcome. Anyone? Pina? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'd like to introduce some of, the, of our U.S. activities. As we had uh, the office, offices in Seattle and uh, Los Angeles and uh, Plano, uh, Texas. The, we uh, actually uh, stopped using the offices in those areas. We uh, contracted with WeWork and um, 
to make our uh, offices and working are very uh, portable. So then uh, the actually the we thought the office was very important to do the, some creative job. Uh, the, in Seattle, uh, we are mainly doing the design of software. And uh, in Plano, what we are doing is an investment. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, our uh, core of uh, the value is the creativity. So we are we concerned about the uh, the changing to WeWork. But uh, on the other hand, what happened is uh, in WeWork, we have other companies people or the freelance people that uh, generate actually the other uh, stimulation or serendipity. So I, I think uh, the in that in that context, I uh, we concerned, but the as a result, the uh, changing the office was a uh, good for us. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I think MSR, you have a US uh, base for T Hub. Uh, what has been your experience between India and US? Sure. I think um, so. Two or three aspects, right? I think uh, uh, you know, uh, particularly you know, as I said, right? One of the things we do is we work with a lot of SaaS companies and uh, uh, software as a service companies, and I think they have. Uh, uh, they have been able to accelerate growth enormously. Uh, so I think, you know, the whole world is now, uh, you know, figured out how to leverage the power of digital. So how do you use uh, digital marketing, uh, et cetera, to reach out to your customers? Customers have got very comfortable, uh, you know, dealing with uh, people behind the screen. And uh, so to that extent, you know, uh, many of our SaaS companies have grown in the last two years, 10x, you know, from a, Obviously, many of them, some of them from a small base, and even the larger ones have grown uh, north of uh, five or six percent. And this whole thing about uh, you know uh, the talent economy and how democratization of that is happening have all been you know tailwinds which have been very uh, very uh, you know uh, good for our uh, ecosystem, right? Uh, so also you know uh, the flow of capital. Uh, so for example. Uh, as you know, uh, we have some challenges with a large neighbor we have up north, who shall remain unnamed, right? Uh, and you know, a lot of that capital is now started flowing into the uh, Indian startup uh, and innovation ecosystem. So, so as I said, you know, uh, in every dark cloud lies a silver lining, and I think uh, that's what's really happened for for many of our startups, right? So, for example, we did a program. Uh, where you know we call it rejig. Uh, so when in the early days, initially you know there was many of our startups went into a little bit of a shock uh, syndrome, trying to figure out how to get over this you know difficult time. So obviously uh, it forced them to you know give us uh, uh, many of them we were able to go back and ask them a very fundamental question, right? Uh, you know uh, that was you know very simple question which is what problem can you solve in the current circumstances right how can you continue to stay relevant right and we used a very simple framework which is uh, companies which do things which are you know vital for what's required now will do well companies which do stuff which is essential may do okay companies which do stuff which is desirable will struggle right so force companies to now start thinking about the very simple framework uh, uh, startups particularly to think about how they can become vital yeah, and that seems to have worked uh, yeah. incidentally the mortality rate of our startups right uh, has actually gone down significantly in the last two years because they've had to make some really tough choices and get much smarter at what what they do yep uh, many uh, my personal experience also has been very very positive Actually, uh, uh, dealing with India uh, uh, for U.S. companies has become much easier. Initially, uh, we were certainly uh, an IT hub, uh, a global IT hub. Uh, uh, later on, we became a healthcare hub. 
and uh, today we are also aiming at uh, to become a manufacturing hub where a cost effective manufacturing in india is worth certainly helping the us uh, customers um, cater to the products uh, from india uh, on uh, the mechanical side or the metal side or non ferrous ferrous uh, castings forgings and things like that so us and india have uh, increased their tie up as far as businesses are concerned on the industrial or the manufacturing front as well so uh, this uh, covid or the pandemic has uh, really uh, not affected uh, uh, to say uh, the businesses as far as uh, manufacturing is concerned as far as india and us relations are concerned bruce uh, i would like to hear you because you have been also international yeah it's uh, it's interesting we we too have not a we work but we too have shifted our offices into a co working environment um I think for us we our, we have more clients obviously because they're uh, for many of them their their pain points or their challenges are understanding their own capability within an organization so we have um clients and partners with up to 500,000 staff who are becoming increasingly uh, aware of understanding the skills and capabilities that we that exist within their organization. So a really good fun example is a fellow I had dinner with in Santa Monica had a toothpaste company and he asked he had to solve the problem of how to generate more revenue. So he asked his staff to come up with ideas to generate more revenue rather than go to a consulting firm or an external group. And the sales people talked about adding 10% onto the bills, which is what sales people think and but it was the industrial designer who downstairs at the bottom floor basically of the building who said why don't we open the mouth of the toothpaste just a little bit wider and and what we sometimes miss is the the latent capacity and ideas from the unusual suspects with even in our own organization so i think what i've noticed is that companies um with covid with their ability to their staff have almost morphed into consulting type of external um they 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 positioned externally from home and their their ecosystem has become a little grayer and so if you think about a company's internal capabilities i think the shift i've seen with my clients is they're much more wanting to be much more precise not just about does bruce know the, uh, what degrees did bruce do what knowledge does bruce have in this job but also what are my interests what are the capabilities i could potentially introduce that you didn't know about me So we're starting to see the fuller human capability being uh, uh leaders are wanting to tap all the expertise in their organization for some and we're talking with one of the big four at the moment they feel like they're really using 10 to 20% of their capacity but there's secrets in their in their staff that they're unaware of so how can they tap so their minds are thinking internally on the external i think that the what covid is doing is it's inverting our our businesses and there's an opportunity to shift value from inside a firm to outside a firm or an organization so there are new business practices from my perspective which are are shifting companies from not just production but orchestration and orchestration is when you realize the scale of your ecosystem so the openness that you need to create the participants in your ecosystem they can be your own staff they can be the your staff's networks they can be the your alumni or if you're a university they can be your clients they can be your beta testers they can be um all the, and when you understand the full scale of your ecosystem i'm seeing more and more effort to build relationships with those with that ecosystem more and more effort to uh create value exchange last night i'm i'm working with a company in new york to do mutual value exchange that can bring great value to each other more and more and just like you said creating new businesses and more and more simplification of complexity so that so i'm sort of at a high level it, people the companies are much more uh capable and and um and desiring to surface their latent talent um to get the best value from their community but also they're inverting and shifting to both production and orchestration of their broader network and their ecosystem because you can touch the ecosystem now you can and it's and it's low cost um 
And generally speaking, again, post COVID, Ukraine, we've just had floods. Citizens, individuals, people do want to be involved in creating a better world, a better experience at work, and are far more, I think, more open to collaboration to um, and to having an impact with their work as much as generating revenue, but to having a, an impact for the good, for a good world. And so, yeah, so that's what I've been seeing. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, I think that I would take it as uh, a very good uh, perspective and uh, I could take that as your closing remarks as well. But I would like to have a closing remarks from uh, the other three panelists as we are running out of time. I think, in fact, uh, we have already crossed our time. Uh, so, Bill, uh, could you just uh, make a small uh, closing remark uh, uh, before we really close the session? I, I think uh, uh, we, we could um, help the people to, uh, to uh, recover from COVID-19 by offer the online courses and also to let them get promoted in their career. Thank you. Uh, MSR, uh, your closing remarks. You're mute. I said uh, COVID has shown how, how resilient we can be, we want to be. And, uh, you know, I think, as I said, businesses are being reimagined. And uh, I like the point which Bruce made about, you know, orchestration. Right? I think companies are now really starting to see how you can leverage the power of the ecosystem. Yep. Yeah, great point. Yep. Thank you, MSR. Uh, Pina, your closing remarks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, COVID-19 was, was bad a uh, disaster for uh, our society. But on the other hand, I believe uh, it is also the great opportunity to evolve our society. Um, and then uh, also uh, we are committed to uh, help and uh, support the changes of our society uh, using our uh, information technology. Thank you. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for all your remarks. Uh, I would like to only add uh, that COVID uh, certainly has uh, make us, or rather made us uh, shed our uh, complacency. This is very, very important that uh, we were going in a direction, we were running very, very fast, uh, being complacent. Uh, so COVID has made us take pause. They have pressed the pause button in, on our laptop and said that, take it easy. And uh, they have uh, really made us shed our complacency. Another factor which uh, COVID has taught us is okay, that uh, they have brought us together. They have developed that mentality of helping each other. If you can, why not? Which earlier, because uh, we were running so fast, we could neglect the surroundings. Today, we started looking at uh, the surroundings, which could be green, which could be brown, or which could be a desert. But then certainly it made us think about what yes. exactly is our surrounding and then how we should be building that ecosystem which uh, most of us have been uh, talking about. Because an individual in a society cannot live alone. He has to live along uh, with people. So it has taught us take people along with you and it has taught us to live happily and with good lifestyles. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, overshot our time. But uh, it has been wonderful. Uh, thank you, Horasis, for giving us this opportunity. Have a nice day. Have a good evening and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. Have a nice Bye. day. Have a nice good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.